fingers. Moves well, Earl Reckons talking about that bridge. Earl Strickland told me that the Brits, when he saw them first time about five years ago, the Muscogee, you have to learn the f the loop bridge to get maximum effect. He said, "Do you, do you agree? Must you use the loop bridge 90% of the time?" Well, the loop bridge is uh, is strange. You know, from a plotting perspective, you want to sight down the cue. So if you use the open bridge as Francisco Bustamante has used there. Uh, you can sight the shot easier. So obviously from a potting perspective, as snooker players are only potting machines, so to speak, that the open bridge is important. But for feel and touch and control of a, of a large ball, the loop bridge is also a very important weapon. A variety of bridges used by Francisco in bridging the gap to come back to a tool. Bustamante retains control of the table. Once again, that back heel completely coming up to the floor. And actually, uh, Bustamante could very well get a, a sponsored logo on his sole of that foot. <laughs> it's in show quite a lot. Uh, Frank Bruno is the other person I know that uh, can have one of those. Right. Maybe uh, a soul food store. Busta here then, uh, looking good for 9-8 in a race to 11. Heart of the pocket. Somewhere down the line there's going to be a critical point in this match where the balls don't go in open play and a big decision has got to be made and a big rack is won. It hasn't happened yet, it would be unlikely if the whole match was played without that most critical moment but at the moment in open play Buster Manti is very much on course he retains the break off marvellous break look at the control on that cue ball hit dead center on the one top spin whipping the ball back to the middle of the table you can't ask for a better break than that he's got to be careful he doesn't lose the one over the pocket and send it along the top rail oh that was magnificent as well knew exactly what was going to happen every reason to believe that Buster Mente goes two racks in front with three to play it's been a marvelous match but possibly not the match that Reyes would be uh, hoping for I think Reyes would excel in a match where clever shots were needed in open play perhaps Buster Mente the better player we just you know we're talking about fractions well we've been talking about him ever since uh, he hit the American tour about 12 years ago, as a future world champion, uh, Mr. Manny, uh, he was 1998 Player of the Year, 1998, he was number one on the Camel Tour in the World Championship here. He got to the semi-final when Efren won it. Just sneaked in. Perhaps a little bit of nerves and tensions coming into that shot, but he did play the ball at the right speed, gave it every chance of dying into the pocket. And all of a sudden, Bustamante once again in perfect position. 
And also, uh, thinking back along the match, that jump shot, the third jump shot that Buster Menti played, how important has that, uh, that been in the match? He was in all sorts of trouble there until he cut and that ball. Here we go, in. and two cushions to make this. He could do this standing up in the dark in a hammock. Great break, got a bit of action on the one he didn't want, on, on the on the cue ball he didn't want. Oh, but look Ooh. how the one has landed, game over, you'd reckon. Very much. Monstrous break again from Bustamente. Didn't like what happened to the cue ball, it got a massive kick off the green six. Bustamenti so close and looks very cool and very collected and you wouldn't bet against him missing any of these last three balls. Trickles the green in. Sweet as you would like. Sweet as you'd like on this black. Uh, just got to work it uh, into the cush. Game over. Francis got Bustamante. Sinks the hopes and the former champ, Efren Reyes. <laughs>